Hello and welcome to yet another hourly experience. In the previous video, I taught you how to make a class for a SQL connector, how to read and write data from a JSON file so that we can retrieve the SQL connection data and then use it to connect. But in this video, I will actually show you how to connect to it. In the previous one, I just showed how to gather the information from a file. In this one, we will actually connect. So first thing we need is the MySQL community installer. So just use your favorite web browser, write MySQL community installer. It's mostly the first link. It should be dev.mysql.com, downloads, installer. Just hit on the first link. You will have this page. Take the one which is of 18 MB, download, wait for it. Over here, it's going to ask if you want to log in or something. Just skip. No thanks. Just start my download. Now, download it. Once you've downloaded it, I've already done it, so I won't do it anymore. Once you've downloaded this file, then install it. Well, obviously. Over here, here we go. This one is it. MySQL Installer Web Community. Once you've done installing this in whichever directory you find it or you want to do it, just you'll get this new application, MySQL Installer Community. Open it. Now, the thing that we need is not none of these. We don't need any of these. But the thing that we need is connector slash net. So we will add, we'll go to MySQL connectors connector slash net, connector slash net 8.0 and the latest version. You see this green arrow, hit that over here and then next, it'll install it. Execute and then just wait for it to install. Give it a moment and done. Next, finish. Now you can see I have installed connector slash net and that's all we need from this. You can close this now. Uh, close the web browser. Now, in your tools, NuGet Package Manager, go to Manage NuGet Packages. Uh, did I click on it? Uh, why is it working? Tools, NuGet Package Manager, Manage NuGet Package for Solutions. Uh, give me a second. I think I need to restart this. Hold on. Gotta love the load. The only thing I hate about this is the loading time. God, I'll pause it. Okay, apparently I did not pause it. Anyways, tools. NuGet Package Manager, Manage NuGet Packages, and it's still not showing up. Not responding. Oh, there we go, finally. In the installed, as you can see, well, not yet, yeah. We need this one, mysql.data. To get it, first let me just, uh, should I uninstall it? Oh, I'll just uninstall it to show it to you guys successfully uninstalled. So go to NuGet Package Manager, browse, and then just write mysql.data and search. This is the, fir the first one. Click on your project and then install. It will ask if you accept the terms and conditions or not. Just hit I accept. Wait for it, wait for it, wait for it. Three, two, one. Ta-da! Okay, apparently not. Okay, finally, I accept. Now that it has installed, I can go ahead and close the NuGet Package Manager. And wherever you have your MySQL class, where you've stored all the data for host, username, password, and database. In my case, it's in the folder MySQL and the class MySQL.cs. We are going to add this reference, 
using mysql.data.mysql client. This is the package that we need. Once you've done that, you need a variable of the data type mysql connection. So public static mysql connection there we go and the name of the variable i'll just use con short of connection and then we will edit the part where we retrieve the information which is this part where the file was found we loaded in the string sql data and then we turned converted the string into an object of this class what we're going to do now is we will make a SQL connection string. So string SQL connection is equals to formatted. Um, the format is host. Oh wait, sorry. Server is equals to SQL dot host semicolon and then server password is equals to sql.password semicolon then uid is equals to sql.username and lastly the database is equals to sql.database semicolon now this is the connection string that we will use to actually connect to our SQL database. Now to create an object of MySQL connection. Over here I just declared the variable but I did not actually create an object. So con is equals to new MySQL connection and inside the parameter we will add the connection string SQL connection. Now we have created an object with the information of the database and we have stored it in con, the one that we created over here. Now we'll, we will use a try and catch block. In try we will try to connect con.open. If it does happen then we will print that the connection is set up if it and we will use the variable we have to turn this to true where the f is my cursor there we go is connection up is equals to true in catch we will just write an exception ex and then main the log server ex dot to string there we go that's all you need now no that's not all you need now we will use our local database for me i'm using samp so i'll just use that i'll turn it on and now let's run the server it should show connection is set up and then I'll show you what would happen if the connection is not set up. As you can see over here it's written that the file was found so it loaded the data and then it connected the server so that means the SQL has been successfully connected but what if the connection was not set up? Let's say for some reason, let's say I did not even activate my a local database then if I try to run the program it'll give me a huge stack of errors you see these are the errors this is how the error is going to show and the exact line in line 41 right over here and that is how you actually connect to the SQL data which you retrieved from another file or let's say you hard-coded it so that's it for today if you learned something then hit that like and subscribe button peace